Well, good morning, everybody. It is official. They have arrived. When I say they, I mean they. So in my area, this year, we are getting the Brood 10 Cicada. And that's what you see here. So here you see, with the wings. Sorry with my focus here, but I hate bugs, so I'm not trying to get super close. Okay, so here with the red eye and the wings is a newly emerged Cicada just molted. So here you see the skin he was in, or she, or whatever they were in. With the hole in the back where they've emerged from that skin, they've shed that skin, whatever you call it, molted. This is my <laughs> onions. So they've, they're on the tops of my onions here. And then we have a couple um, of the ectoskeletons or whatever you want to call it that has been left behind overnight. Seeing like a good amount of them. There's uh, <laughs> we've got this little couple one. We got this couple two. Um, Oh, well, here we go, guys. There's another one here. It's three. Another one here is four. And uh, some of the skeleton, or ectoskeleton, whatever it's called, skins, that I left um, hanging out on my onions. I've also found them on places like my fence. Um... Here's just one on one of my raised beds. But they seem to be mostly hanging out on my onions right now. I don't know why. Maybe because they're tall. So, a little bit about cicadas. This is what you have to do to protect your young plants from cicadas. So you can order these um, insect netting bags and young trees and young woody shrubs need to be protected from the cicadas. And so that's trees. They say um, anything that is like three years and younger. Um, I'd say three years and younger or anything that's spindly because what happens is the female cicada will land on the branches and she will dig a little niche into the branches where she will then lay some eggs, I believe. And that is how we have baby cicadas. Now they do not eat your plants at all you don't have to worry about them eating your um, crops or your flowers or anything. The only damage that's caused is from them with the trees, with the young trees. Um, it can cause some damage from them cutting into the trees. 
Another point of damage that you may have from cicadas is due to weight. So if you have plants like my Nepeta here, it's, it just kind of falls over. It's not real strong. It's a perennial. If they land on that, they're, they're pretty heavy little things because um, they're not all that little. And so the weight can break off stems from your plants. Soon, trees like this and the base of trees are going to be covered in cicadas. Thickly covered in cicadas. Every year we get cicadas. Cicadas aren't new. I see a lot of people say, oh, I love the sound of cicadas. Why are you guys worried about cicadas this year? But the reason that people are worried about cicadas this year is because these aren't your yearly cicadas. These cicadas only emerge every 17 years. And when they emerge, there's millions, probably billions of them. I think they said they can emerge in like a billion, and, I mean a million an acre or something like that. That's a lot of bugs. <laughs> so here's my astilbe plant that I just planted. And here we go. So now these three cicadas are super young because see they're yellow. They're just now coming out of the shell, literally. That one you can see him coming out or her or whatever. We've got this one in the back. We've got one here. Oh, we have some here on the hookah raw. So they're really just all over. They are coming out of their skin. Coming out. The sound when there's that many cicadas is unbelievable and it's all day and night. It's, it's like a freight train going by your house all day and night. Now, as I said, I am afraid of bugs. I don't care about them landing on my tree. I'm not worried about them landing on my plant. I know they're not gonna hurt it. And they don't even have mouths or anything that can bite you. My fear is unfounded, unreasonable. My logical brain says, this bug cannot hurt you. <laughs> that doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't want this bug near me or on me. And when they are in full emergence, which I will do another video, they're going to be everywhere, just flying around everywhere. <laughs> and they say, because the temperatures have risen, that this is going to be the week that they're really going to hit a, with a punch. Here we go. Here's here's some on the swing set. And this will give you a better look at the maybe you can see that better where they come out there. <laughs> oh heavens. Okay. Alright, so here we have a great show of some on the tree, and it's only a couple because they really just started. There were gradually emerging, and then yesterday I noticed like five on uh, over by one of my other trees. And today it's the first time I really see them in the backyard. There was only one on my onion yes last night, but so this is a here we have them. There's 
some, some more, oh, some more. Look at this. This one is literally in the process of coming out. Where is he? Where is it? Up there. Look at that. Literally in the process. And then and they go all the way up the trees. Way up there. But in a week, you probably won't be able to see this tree. The bark, it's going to be covered in the cicadas. Covered. And this is how we know they're coming and where. A little, well, a little bit because they're going to be leaving these holes. This is where they come out of the ground, right? So you're going to have these holes all around your tree. And you know they're, they're coming out. Sorry, morning allergies. Here we have some, here we have some on the fence. They're all over the fence, a couple spots. None on the hammock. <laughs> None on this side of the tree. None really on this one. And it's so funny because our compost bin is back here. And it's where I keep my gorilla cart. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to be hanging out under these trees soon. The good thing is that the cicadas only last uh, I think four to six weeks. So, my goal was to get as much of my gardening as far as like planting and stuff done before they emerged. That way, I don't really have to, I don't have to be outside. <laughs> I can just come out and uh, do some quick maintenance. I'm going to, I really wanted to get dripping everywhere before they submerged so I wouldn't have to come out at all if I didn't want to. But that hasn't happened yet. We did get a soaker hose. Travis surprised me with some soaker hose yesterday for the cut flower garden. So, but I might need to just invest in a little bit of drip before then. Oh my, oh my. So here they are on my basket where my lavender is. Oh, and then I just looked and they're in my potato crop. In the potatoes. There they are. <sighs> Folks, it's happening. It's real. We can't get around it. It's really happening. <laughs> I have this little tree here in this pot. I really believe I'm going to move it because it's right near my water hose and I don't want to go over there if it's going to be covered in cicadas. Oh, and while we're talking about bugs, guys, so I know, you know, your typical aphids are like the little, um, sorry, my morning allergies are so bad. They're the little black, uh, green bugs. Okay, so I don't know what this is. Does anybody know what these are? If you know what this is, can you comment for me what it is and how do I treat it? Because I, I need to get rid of it. I'm battling bugs so bad this year. I don't understand why. And I've seen somebody else post that as well, that they were doing the same. Look at the aphids on this rose. <laughs> like, this is crazy. Like, I've treated this every single day. Look at that. Ugh, oh, and stink bugs. Oh, I mean, this is bad this year. And I don't know what those little flies are. Guys, I need some comments, please. <laughs> I need some help here, because... Me and bugs, I just can't handle it. 
No cicadas over here in the garlic and the little onion bed. There, my onions are, they're bolting. And look, they're nowhere near ready. I might have to just do away with the onions this year. And I might do away with the garlic too. Just because I can't handle the cicada horde that's going to be all over it. I don't know. And our temperatures have been really crazy. It's been really hot. And then chilly. And then hot. And then chilly. And then, like, no rain. No spring rain. Not our, I don't feel like it's been our normal spring rain. So I think my onions are just... And they're confused. I don't know what's going on. So a couple of them are trying to bolt. I even have... I know, this is supposed to be about cicadas, but... I got a squirrel mind over here. Let me show you this. While I'm sniffling. Oh, is this basil, is it bolting? Literally just planted this. Like, look how tiny this thing is. Like, come on. Is that? Oh, heavens. Okay. So this is what you want to do to help protect your plants. So one of the things you want to do is cover them with the netting. Like I showed you the, my little dogwood tree was covered with the netting and it comes like this. I ordered these from Amazon. They were like two for 20. Sorry, there's a lot of background stuff because we live right in a neighborhood. But you'll see it's just a giant bag. giant bag, like, as big as me, <laughs> and then you just take the open end and just plop it over your tree, they come with a drawstring, now the one that I have here, this drawstring honestly didn't work really great, so I tightened it as tight as I could get it, and then I um, just took a zip a zip tie and put it around the bottom and then just zip, zip tied it onto the tree but that is it as far as plant protection another thing that you want to do is like i said a big problem with the cicadas on your flowers and your vegetables and stuff they're not going to eat it but they will weight down the branches and break fragile branches um you know um, flower stalks and such so what you want to do is, if you can tolerate it, I don't know how I want to do this, is you would want to pick them off. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. <laughs> I might find something, a little rake or something, and just kind of try to get them to wiggle their own way off of there. Hopefully. And hopefully none of them fly on to me. Something else that a lot of us have is bird feeders. Um, you want to keep the little bird feeder clear, bird baths, fountains like I have here. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your ponds, your waterfall, and your fountains don't get clogged. So you will have to maintain this to some degree of making sure that there's none getting into the reservoirs. Another concern that people have is their pets. Um, because dogs and cats and stuff will eat them. Uh, from all the research that I've seen, it's okay if they eat them. You just want to make sure they don't eat too many of them and cause them to get sick. Um, I remember when we had them the last time, 17 years ago, people were selling them on eBay and like chocolate dipped cicadas and stuff like that. So you definitely, they're not poisonous. You, they definitely can be consumed. I just would watch it for my pet, make sure it didn't get their stomach hurt. I wouldn't, you know, just feed them to my pet, probably. But if they ate one, you don't have to completely freak out. It should not kill them. Um, what is something else that you need to do? You need to protect your trees, young trees. Older trees that are, like, really thick and established, like this um, weeping cherry here, it should be fine. But little trees, like that dogwood that I showed you that I had covered, it's only two years in the ground. This is its second year. I planted it last spring so it would not do well with the cicada situation at all rose bushes so i have a really large bush here give me a second let me move so you can see it 
Okay, we have this really, really large rose bush here. It's well established. I'm not worried about the cicadas on this whatsoever. However, my new rose bushes, like this here, this I'm going to cover. I just put this in the ground this year, um, not even a week ago. So I am going to cover that one and make sure that it's protected. I probably won't do it just yet. I'll keep an eye and if I start to notice any cicada activity in the area of that plant, then I will come out and cover it. I have another rose bush over here that I just planted. I will do the same for them. But the rest of the things I'm just going to let go. I do have some hydrangea over here that are incredible. And this is their second year in the ground, but the stems are just not all that strong. So I will probably be covering those again like the rose when i if i see activity happening or um anything climbing on them I'll, if i can't keep a handle on keeping the cicadas brushed off then i will go ahead and cover them as well like i said the the bags are really affordable you get them on amazon just look up am, um, insect netting bags tree bags and you will find them pretty cheap on amazon and i think mine are so I think the ones that I have on the trees and the ones I bought were five foot bags and that should be plenty enough for new trees or new shrubs that you need to cover. In most cases, I would think anything larger than that does not need the protection that you would get from the bags. So I wouldn't worry too much about those for large trees or large shrubs. Like I have this giant azalea, which has just gone out of bloom, but I wouldn't worry about trying to cover something like that. If you're not able to get the bags, you can definitely just use some type of gauzy material. Something lightweight because you want your plant to be able to breathe. You don't want to weight it down too much. So like a tool, I think that's how you say it. But you can kind of see that that's the type of fabric that I have here. And like I said, I just zip tied around the bottom here. See, we got some little buggies trying to get in, but they can't. And that, I believe, is a tick. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's a tick. But <laughs> um, one thing to make sure is that when you start the bag that you don't have any bugs in there already, which I do, there is a little bug right here, I'm gonna have to try to squash him. But yeah, so you, like I said, you can just do the bag or you can just do a piece of fabric, drape it over. Just make sure it's not heavy and it's breathable. Your plant can still get plenty of air and plenty of light. You can see it's getting plenty of sunshine right here. So this plant, this tree should be in good shape. It's suffering a little bit because it has an iron deficiency. So you can see the yellowing, but let me tell you, these leaves were pretty much completely yellow. And I recently treated them with some iron tone. I'm gonna treat them again here soon, but they're looking so much better, like 80% better. Just the tips now. So it's a little, a little more treatment. They should be good to go. But so that's about it. The cicadas are here. They're coming. If they're not here already where you are, they're really um, an issue for like Maryland, PA, Delaware, that area. I mean, I've heard that it goes up as high as like Ohio and such. So just, you know, do a Google search. You'll find out exactly if you're supposed to get the cicadas in your area. And if you are, those are the precautions you need to take. You can stop being as scared about them affecting your crops, your vegetables, um, or eating your plants. Nothing like that's gonna happen. So hopefully that'll give you a little bit of peace of mind about what's about to happen or what's happening now with your garden and cicadas, your yard and the cicadas, or just cicadas in general. They're not really going to hurt you. They're just a nuisance. The noise is a nuisance. The massive amount of them is a nuisance 
and they could damage some newer trees and shrubs, younger trees and shrubs, not necessarily newer because if you bought an established plant, it should be okay. Just give everything a little bit of good fertilization, make sure everything stays watered so that it is nice and strong and healthy and can put up a good fight against the weight bearing and stuff that they're gonna have to deal with with these bugs. But the cicadas really are just nothing to worry about. If you're like me and you just hate bugs, just, you know, try to avoid them as much as possible. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna park in the garage and I'm gonna run from and do the car when I have to get places. Hopefully I don't have to be out there with them too much. From what I've read, they're here from the mid-May to mid-June and then they're gone and we won't see them again for another 17 years. So I am perfectly happy with that. A lot of people really, really love these bugs. They're great for the ecosystem apparently. Um, and they're just a really cool bug because they, they only come out every 17 years. And I shouldn't say bug, I should say insect, but but you know, and they um, come out in such mass that they don't really have a predator that they're worried about because there's so many of them that even what gets taken out isn't a dent to their population. So they are really a really cool thing. There's different broods that come out different years, different places, but this is for the brood X, brood 10, that'll be in the Maryland, Delaware, PA, Ohio type region. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Please like the video, subscribe, share, and it'll help me be able to make more videos and get more content out to you guys soon. So until next time, bye-bye.